I supposed to be the franchise player and we in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Yes. Not a game, not a game. Me. Bam, bam. Me, man. Not a game. Slap that place, she scored 30. What are we even talking about, man? We talking about sports here. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the MMA Tap Hour, baby. Hey, play one more time, one more time. Nice, man. What's up, everybody? As you know, we're, we're talking about sports, and today we have a special uh, little... Little segment, little little uh, step show, I guess you could say, with the MMA Top Hour. So, what's up? It's Ron. Uh, we all win on Twitter, and I got the boys with me here. Y'all want to introduce yourselves real quick? Well, we I want to go with the guests. We got to yeah, go with the guests first. We got a guest on the Hi, podcast, man. so a friend of the show. You know, he's appeared on the podcast before, and we like to bring him in for MMA because he's an avid MMA fan. Uh, so, without further ado, Rolando Roland. What's Yo, up? what's up, guys? Thanks for having me. You know, MMA, soccer, those are my things. Yeah. Hell yeah. Always can count on Roland for a good MMA conversation. Uh, Justin, how mm -hmm. you doing? Good. Uh, last time Roland was on the pod, I didn't get to join. This time I'm here. I'm glad. This is my cousin, one of my closer cousins. Yeah. Uh, we're in a few groups for MMA. Uh, so whenever it comes to conversation about MMA, we're in it. We're in the thick of it, man. So I'm glad we're uh, be able to chop it up here on the pod today. Yeah. Well, hell yeah, man. It sounds like we got a fucking house full of killers in here. So I'll be the, uh, yeah, I'll be the uh, Molly, uh, what is it? Molly Rose, uh, Molly Curum. Yeah, Molly Curum Rose, as she likes to say, uh, for this little episode here and uh, let these gurus, uh, you know, get the job done. How did you guys do on the last uh, MMA pod, man? Your, your picks and shit. Oh, what? Aspen Lab. It was that uh, McDonald card. Didn't make the fight, remember? Oh, you're talking about last time I was on, or yeah, no, no, oh, the last. Oh, time. yeah, 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 or 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 uh, last. No, time. I think I think he was referring to some plays that we gave out on our la on our oh, previous episode yeah. of the MMA yeah. Hour, but we had what two fights canceled in in that with with plays that we had, so yeah. plays that we had fights got canceled. We didn't lose any of the plays though. The plays won. It's just there that there go. were parlays, and you know they didn't fully cash because the other half of the parlay was uh, canceled. Aspen Ladd was one of them, and you know she's the main event for the card that we're going to talk a little bit about today. So, you All know right. she she missed weight, looked terrible on the scales a couple of weeks ago, and she's back main eventing, filling okay. in for Holly Holm. So yeah, so last time we also talked about Douglas Lima, that ended in a disaster of a result, oh. which now has changed Bellator's rules. All main events will be now five rounds, mimicking the UFC style of main events. Now the issue for that is you had the Yoel Romero fight. He's in the main event. He thinks he still has two more rounds to go. So now they're going to go to a five round uh, for all main events from here on out. Nice. So then it, uh, apparently there was some fucking game changers uh, on, on the last card you guys bet on. 1-1. One, one. All right. 1-1. <laughs> USA, USA Soccer 1-1. All right. Bet. All right. Cool. All right, man. So then you guys, it sounds like you guys did well uh, on, on the last show. Like Ben said, we didn't take any L's as far as the bets went. And – you know, as long as we don't take any L's, that's all that matters, man. Pushes our wins. So uh, we're good there. So to bring us into uh, – we're going to get to the UFC a little bit later. But to, be, to bring us into the biggest fight of this past weekend, it was in MMA, but they still threw some chingazos. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there it is right there. Fury and Wilder. Can you guys see that? No. Yeah, we got it open right here. There we go. There it is. All right. Oh, yeah. Security uh, and So take us into it. Who wants to, who wants, who I'll, wants to start? I'll, right? I'll paint the picture here a little bit, uh, and then I'll let Justin and Roland get into this. But the trilogy, first fight was a draw. Second fight, Fury dominated, got him out of there. We heard every excuse under the sun from Wilder. The third fight was the best fight of all the fights, in my opinion. I mean, this was an absolute slugfest. Boxing definitely needed this fight because boxing doesn't have many big fights and a lot of people you know a trilogy the other two fights kind of we know how they went but this fight lived up to everything that it was made up to be i think and more 
the fight ended and still bad blood uh, after the fight ends. So we saw both guys get knocked down Fury twice in run round, you know, and we know how Wilder ended up when the fight ended. But I thought that it was the best fight that's happened this year, personally. Me personally, I thought it was exciting as hell. It had everything and it had that big fight atmosphere. I loved it. I loved the outcome. I loved everything about it. So it sounds like you were a very satisfied boxing fan this I past was. weekend. Watching then. on my cell nice. phone. I love it. <laughs> Justin, before Justin, before we go to you, we gotta go to the guest, the guest of honor today. Roland, what's uh what did you take away from this fight, man? Anything to follow up to what Ben said? Yeah, so actually from 5 30 to 6 right now i actually just rewatched the fight so i could like oh, oh wow so, so here's nice. my takeaways here's coming my correct takeaways. round three you can see it in wilder he was done round three just he was already gassed i mean the difference is when they set up their power hand wilder for example he aims with his left and that's the difference he aims so every time i mean the head movement of tyson fury is phenomenal even i mean we always see those videos of boxers and you see them doing their ducking under under the under the yeah. string back and forth. I mean, that first knockdown he got of uh, Wilder, he literally prime technique fundamental, dropped the head, came around with the hook and caught him. And it's just like the thing I could, I was talking to my brother Gabe here. Um, the thing I compared it to is like when Roger Federer is hitting a tennis ball. His face goes uh, down and he, he swings through his shot and his head stays down there. And so the smooth. Is, so smooth and then it's and i made that point about wilder the way he i mean points at his his uh where his target is the difference between fury is fury comes in he's throwing to blind you he's not aiming where he's shooting so when he throws that one two it's blinding you with the first one and he comes around with the second one and of course footwork you could see his uh uh wilder's footwork start to go in about six round and that's actually when he drops him um but at the end, I mean, the finish, I mean, the finish was a perfect finish. And just like Ben, I was at a wedding and the wedding finished and me and Josh, shout out Josh Gonzalez. Uh, we were in a car. Everybody left. We're in some random parking lot in the middle of New Braunfels. Like, oh, some New ranch. Braunfels. There, the the weird little lady watching the <laughs> and, and watching it, screaming at the, at the freaking phone, my little iPhone 12 mini. <laughs> the good time on that. What a fight. What an ending. I mean, what more can you ask for? You get what? six uh, five knockdowns in total i mean yep. the crowd yeah. on their feet the ref a lot of people were saying that the ref had a hard time separating i didn't think re-watching it i don't think he had too much hard of, of a time keeping them apart but what i did notice is that i mean fury's just a genius and using his body weight i mean throwing his body weight i mean like i said in round three go rewatch the fight it's on youtube on some russian channel that you wouldn't even know who's <laughs> But rewatch it. Round four. Or, look at or, his face. He's gone. Or uh, here in the valley would be Azteca. <laughs> <laughs> An hour after the fight, right? To be yeah. hey, to Azteca. Justin, so, Justin, I, Ron, I'm going to throw it to Justin real quick. But just to, you know, to kind of carry on to what Roland said, Justin, about the weight kind of being an issue. And you saw Wilder come in a lot heavier than the first two fights, right? I think yeah. you had even alluded to it a little bit prior to the fight. What did you think of the heavier Wilder? I thought it was the best fight that he put up in all of them, but it clearly, like he said, he gassed in the third round. Yeah, it was a detriment to his overall gas tank. It did work. Uh, the game plan, those first three rounds, jabbing to the body, hooking the body, but then he realized, open mouth, I'm tired, I can't do this 12 rounds. And after that, it was just a pick apart by Fury. Um, but what a fight, you know. The two knockdowns that Wilder does manage to get on Fury, and Fury just rises up like a zombie and still comes back and knows that, you know what, I can rely on my technical abilities that this man Wilder doesn't possess. Wilder is yeah. just that one big shot pony, you know, that one trick shot pony, and if he lands, it's a mess, but Fury was ready for it, and once you sort of just take that away from him, it's it was all pick apart by Fury. But, uh, Ben, I do have... A little bit of a gripe with what you said about boxing, and I'm going to defend boxing here a little bit. I don't. I'm not with that whole of boxing needed a big fight like this because right now, to me, if Canelo goes and tells Jerry Jones, "I want to fight at the Dallas Cowboy Stadium," they're selling that mother lover out. There's a difference between selling a fight out like Canelo does and it 
being living up to a fight. Yeah. Canelo yeah. runs over his opponents, fam. We love to get together and watch a Mexican beat the fuck out of everybody. Yeah, yeah, we and, love it. But this shit was a war. Yeah, you it was know, a war. Canelo attrition. is not. Canelo is not in wars. Canelo no, he's not because he's so skilled. Right? I completely. But Tyson I, I, I completely very agree. skilled too. He's yeah. just and, fighting the other best heavyweight in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the other thing I want to say about boxing, still to this day, the top five most selling combative sport pay per views. Boxing still holds four. So I'm still not with this whole boxing needed this. Boxing has this. It's just that we don't get the heavyweights that we did in the 90s. Yeah, but when? Uh, but, 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 but when, yeah, when those, were those, those top four? four when? Those four, none of those fighters are active right now in boxing. I was going to say, it's probably fucking Maybe Canelo, years ago. Canelo's the only one, and it's Mayweather in the other part. Right. But what I'm saying, knows, though, is that I don't feel like boxing's a dying breed still. I don't think it's a dying sport the way... Uh, Dana White has kind Canelo, of alluded to Canelo's recently. Keeping it alive, bro. That's just the truth. Roland, I mean, you got Tank Davis, you got Charlo, no, you got Teofimo. I mean, there's no, guys. Look, look, you got Lomachenko. Look, man, this is look. This is what it, this is what it comes down to. You could name all the fighters in the world. You could name the top fighters. You know, these the best guys. If they put on the show, but it doesn't, it it doesn't give the fans what they want. Then fans start watch, stop watching. Uh, judging, judging was really, really bad for a lot of years, it and was. even and, and 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 that's another thing that says people just didn't want to watch anymore. Even if it was Canelo, and even if or whoever your favorite fighter was, you know Triple G, uh, you know all these new big guys. If if you knew it wasn't gonna be a good fight, and you say, "Oh, he's gonna beat that guy real easy," the guy's nothing. Then that's when you stop watching. That's when you stop paying. So. Ben, I think is right in this is that this is what boxing needed because it gets viewers to say, oh, shit, this was a fucking awesome fight. It lived up to the hype. Maybe I should give boxing another chance. And then they come back around. Yeah. Roland, Roland, do you agree that it's like who else sells pay-per-views in boxing besides Canelo? I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think it's about I think it's about the changing of the guard, kind of what's happening in UFC. I mean, we throw out these names. We know the Lomachenkos, the Theofimos, but yeah. I, I think the people that are drawn to them because of the drama that's come with them. I mean, Theofimo beating Lomachenko. I mean, Canelo was losing to Billy Joe Saunders. I mean, before he knocked him out. There, there's just, but there's maybe like a half, there's maybe five household names in boxing right now. Household. Just, 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 think, researching, uh, just no, researching. No, no, I was texting you, Ron, about the next slide. But what I'm going to give five names. I, hopefully, I can. The Charlo Bros, that's two of them. They're Tank Davis, names. Ryan Garcia, Bud Crawford, Teofimo Lopez, again, Johnny Golovkin, uh, Canelo. That. I mean, there's more you than can't five even names. Say some of these names, right, Justin? Because I was trying to say them as fast as I can. Then you got Fury, Wilder, then you got Usage, you got uh, Anthony Joshua, then Usage? you got Andy Ruiz. We're talking about a household Robert Benavides, names, Mikey Justin. Garcia. Those are household <laughs> names to me no, because I guess dude. I follow boxing, but it, right. I, I don't know. I just maybe but, I'm just too into it, but I had to defend boxing's honor just a little bit. I mean, I was giving boxing props, Justin. All right. I was giving them props. This, this, I said it was the biggest fight of the year it was. so far. It was. And You're the right. year's almost over. Yeah. The, all right. So we are, all right. So we could so we could agree to disagree on that topic. We're so, have to. Yeah, pretty much. It, but it was pretty much unanimous that everybody enjoyed the fight. Everybody had a hell of a time. Oh, watching absolutely. It, right? So yes. moving on. Now these headlines came out. Deontay Wilder. I did my best, but it wasn't good enough. He has now been knocked out by Fury. Uh, he his courageous effort on Saturday won home many fans. We haven't seen the last. Have we seen the last of Deontay Wilder, guys? Yes or no? I, I'll I go think- first. Uh, okay, go, 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 go. It's, it's, it's going to be hard to book Deontay Wilder because, one, he has no belts now. Two, what kind of upside is there to fighting him? Because he's still that knockout artist regardless. Everybody he met until Fury, he's put down. So it's going to be a very hard uh, for Bob Arum to market him because I, I don't know how. Who's going to want to take that fight now? That's oh. just my opinion on it. I'm not saying we saw the last of Deontay Wilder, but with these top names who hold belts, like Anthony Joshua, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want that smoke. He wants the belt smoke with Fury, and he can't get that no more because he doesn't have any belts to defend himself. So we'll Roland. see what happens. Roland. Wow, Justin, you're fucking no. going hard it's, on this tap hour, boy. It's very <laughs> simple, though, Roland. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's going to have to be Wilder versus Joshua, and the loser is just going to have to disappear. 
But that's the only way that one of them is going to get credibility back because it's the only fight left. It's like when two prospects clash and it's kind of, you know, make or break time. Whoever loses that fight is is done. That that Then I'll say we've seen the last of them. But that's what needs to happen. It's the only thing that can happen because Josh was in the exact same place. He just lost to a dude that nobody knew the name of before he beat Joshua. And he lost to Reese. So they just need to fight each other. It, it might get some buyers. You know, they're they're known, both of them still. But loser leaves town, bro. They're loser gonna they're town. gonna do the uh the the 1980, 1990 uh WWE loser leaves town. Loser <laughs> leaves town. Uh, loser <laughs> leaves, hey, the loser goes to MMA. Yeah, right. Think, uh, All right, Roland, how do you wanna close this uh close this out, man? Well, I think everybody's gonna have to wait because I think Anthony Joshua uh, triggered the rematch clause with usage. usage. Yeah. yeah, usage. Ah, yeah, he's got so a mandatory. He, tri he triggered that. In England, point there. I'm sure. In England, if this was, wherever. if this was, uh, if this was around the horn, I would definitely give you points right now. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> well, then, go up. Yeah. yeah. So I think at the uh, at the end of the day, I think if Joshua loses again, it just depends on how long Tyson Fury's gonna want to sit out. If he's gonna want to sit out a while. When is the rematch going to happen with Usic? That which I anticipate probably May or June. So that means if depending on how much damage he takes, if Joshua comes out victorious, I mean he didn't look that good uh, against Usic. I think Usic will come out and do the same exact thing. Like you said, he's not going to go try to knock him out. He's going to outpoint him. I think if he can overcome that win, he'll get the fight with Fury, which is the next best title fight that we can hope for. Because I mean nobody's going to compare to Fury right now, and it's just going to get boring. And I think. Going back to y'all's conversation before, I think the issue with boxing is it got boring for people because the winners kept winning and there was no drama. And now we just got all this drama. So boxing is on everybody's radar. Yeah, boxing has been very uh, – some, somebody wins uh, 18, 20 fights in a row and then some one person comes around, you know, and then tries to beat them and take them down from their crown. It, it's, it's always been like that. It hasn't always been, you know, one month it's this guy, the next couple months it's this guy. It's always been he's on an 18-fight win streak and let's see if he can take him down, you know, a lot of shit like that. But um, that was the biggest takeaway, I think, of the weekend as far as uh, MMA, mixed martial arts, boxing – uh, combat every, sports. Combat sports. I think everybody can agree up here that it uh, it lived up to the hype, and it might have brought some boxing fans uh, back to pay for these pay per views. But we are here for MMA, UFC, Bellator. Uh, so let's just get into the MMA news, and we'll start off with that before we get to the picks uh, later on in the show. Yeah, we got picks, man. Some unfortunate news. Oh, Absolutely. some unfortunate news is that there's Chuck. Liddell is missing from this. Film. <laughs> oh, Chuck Liddell! Chuck Liddell is mixed. It's mixed. It's mixed. There's, yeah, we we we're gonna wait till we can report that one accurately. Oh, okay. So that was a that was a breaking news last minute. Uh, it happened. Edit. It no. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a business decision right, right before. It was a business. Ah, oh, wow. Okay. Did uh the lawyers told us something about that, right? Yeah. That we could yeah. put that slide up. Well, we got okay. on the horn with Roland somewhat. Hey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. MMA news official stuff. Luis Peña, uh, Luis Peña allegedly hit girlfriend other woman during domestic violence incident. The UFC has released him following two recent domestic violence arrests. So it seems like this guy doesn't hasn't learned his lesson, man. Who wants to open up on this uh, mug shot of him Roman, with some wacky Roman, ass hair? To open up here. <laughs> Have y'all read the statement? You mind if I read it real quick? Go, Go ahead. ahead. Look right. at this. I love our – look at the guest just call me with it too, man. You might have to be – More points. You might have to have him More points. <laughs> More points. <man. laughs> More points. You're, you're in the lead right now, man. Let's go. So um, I'll finish what I have to say about it, but let me read it first. On the above date and time, which was some sometime before October 12th, the defendant, Mr. Peña, was involved in a physical altercation with the person who he had, whom he had been in an intimate relationship with for the last one and a half years, that Mr. Peña actually and intentionally struck his fiance in the face multiple times with the closed fists and continued to strike while she was on the ground, ground and pound on his girl. Wow, his fiance had I minor. Mean, it's, not, it's not funny, right? But yes, guys, not, you can't believe this shit. Yeah, yeah bro. Wait, check this out. You're laughing in oh, shock. Oh, I read this exact story. I've read this exact story. Yeah. His fiance had minor abrasions on the top of her left hand, abrasions on her left wrist, and a bite mark to her left knee. 
Damn. While while the incident was occurring, the fiance, uh, another victim observed the altercation and attempted to step in and defuse the situation. At that time, Mr. Peña struck them in the left eye with a closed fist. The strike caused a purple contusion to the eye of the person trying to help. Just knocking people out in the bedroom. Women. Oh, Women. When she <laughs> fell, she got a laceration to her right elbow. And both have provided sworn statements, and the injuries were photographed. So that's like that's intense. I mean, and this guy is fucked up. He's he's a guy that they I mean, he came in, and it's been a lot of uh, mental issues. And the UFC even said that they've tried to get him help uh, mm -hmm. prior. Like this wasn't you know their first. Yeah. Well, look uh, at his picture, man. I mean, fuck. That's his mugshot. Yeah, I'm, but look how she looks. Like I know they looks compare him to up. Bob Ross, the painter. You know that guy that everybody was for Halloween? They call him the Violent Bob guy. Ross. He's the Violent Bob wow. Ross. Um, very violent, unfortunate to see and hear about. I mean, because we didn't see it. We just hear about But damn, that shit doesn't sound right. He has had a lot of mental uh, mental health issues that, that he, he's expressed openly about. Sounds like an episode if you're just, you know, punching at women that are coming at you. Clearly not okay. You know, needs to get help. So I do hope that he gets help. And you know, terrible to see. I saw it on Yahoo. It was on the front page of Yahoo. So Justin, what do you got? Big news. Well, you know, initially I'm a fan of this guy. He was on the Ultimate Fighter with uh, Cormier and Stipe. Uh, Violent Bob Ross was his nickname they gave him because of you know his looks. He was homeless at the time, so I wanted him to win the contract so bad because you know. He didn't have a house. He was doing everything through his car. He was that, he was that feel good story. Somebody he was that feel good story. You he know, he, he he was a, uh, I believe like a foster kid as well. He didn't know his father, so there was a lot on him already on his plate. And he he did very good his opening match. He won his match. Got injured. Couldn't continue in the tournament, but they kept him in the house regardless because of the win. And they signed him. He ends up going to, um, train with Daniel Cormier in California. Then moves over to Florida with American Top Team. And, you know, in and out of the UFC wins, losses here and there. Couldn't really put it together. But it's just a sad situation when you hear these sort of things. And and it's coming out uh, more and more often with these MMA fighters. I know, as Ben alluded to before, we had Chuck Liddell. We're still trying to get all the information on that. But there's a domestic violence, you know, circulating around his name. We just can't put it on him yet because um, we don't know for sure. And then the other thing is... uh with John Jones as well. So who? John Jones. <laughs> yeah, Roland, you came on wearing a shirt. You know, oh, ready, ready for I, the smoke. I got let's, it. Let's let's let uh, yeah, let's let Roland touch on this. Uh uh touch on that situation and then we'll we'll go to the next one. <clears throat> yeah, if anything, I think I mean we're gonna touch on John Jones a little bit later, right? Yeah, and, we yeah. Will. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for we'll this. Get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then uh, pretty much with this guy, man, it, he was uh, somebody who you wanted to see win, and it just didn't happen for them. Unfortunately, uh, you know, our thoughts go out to those women because at the end of the day, I mean, it's not a good situation regardless of whether you're an MMA fighter or an NBA player or just a regular old guy. We should never put our hands on women, man. So never. a sad story, sad story nonetheless. But uh, as you guys were talking about, we'll, we'll, we'll continue on. We'll save the cherry on top, uh, you know, the John Jones. But uh, some other MMA news right here. Some fight bookings. Some fight bookings. Let's get into yep. the fight bookings. So what do you guys think this, man? Edwards, Masvidal, the grudge this, match. This and, is, uh, well, first off, I think it's hilariously titled grudge match because, like, if they've already fought before, which yeah. they did in the back of a stadium when uh, Masvidal gave the three-piece and the soda to them. Uh, Leon Edwards. Uh, Roland, take it away on this one, man. I want to hear your take. Oh, man. Leon Edwards is just not from here. You know what I mean? Walking <laughs> up on someone. I mean, we know what it's like. We're from the South. <laughs> you know yeah. I, mean? um, I think that Leon Edwards made a good point today. You know, he's the one willing to take the fight. He took a Cosmop fight. He took um, he took the Nate Diaz fight. He's fighting mm -hmm. all these guys unranked before him. And he made that point today. And I was like, I have to just I have to give him credit for that because he does put himself in that position to lose his ranking. But his marketability isn't there. So I think it's just put him in his place. I it's, mean, a it's a favor. It's a favor. He's always exactly. the B side when he takes those fights that he shouldn't be taking. He's the B side and he's the B side here again. 
those sides been uh those other fights that you said that he's been taking how is his uh record i mean is he a guy that has a chance or yeah I oh, mean, he's, he, he, he doesn't lose yeah, he's a big favorite coming into this fight. I mean, we right. saw him fight against Nate Diaz, and Nate, you know, he pretty much dominated Nate. But in the last round, you know, the, the gas tank, Nate had the gas. He rocked Leon, didn't capitalize, just pointed at him. I know a lot of people criticized him about that. Um, but to be honest, he's a he's a three-to-one favorite. He opened up in this fight. He's minus 300. The comeback on Masvidal is like plus 240, plus 235. I think – and. This is not going to be a, a five-round fight. That's what I don't like about it. But I do think that if they keep it standing, and I, not that I expect Edwards to because he's usually a pretty safe fighter, but he kept it standing with Nate Diaz. He's got to realize that Nate Diaz and Masvidal don't carry the same power. Masvidal punches a lot harder. If it stays standing, Edwards is going to get his ass knocked out. That's wow, right. That's a bold statement that's, coming from that's from you saying he's a three to one dog, and then you making that statement. It sounds like you got some serious. Uh, the, the fight has to stay that way, Ron. Right, right, right. Correct. I'm curious, yeah. I'm curious to know where Justin and Roland think the fight will take place. For the most part, we'll probably break it down more in depth when it takes place. It's coming up here in December. But do you all think that Leon Edwards plays it safe and just goes for the win because he needs to stay active while Moss while Usman and, and Colby Covington fight? Or does he, you know, try and get Masvidal out of there standing up? Because that would be a huge mistake, in my opinion. I, I have to agree completely with you, Ben, on all your takes there. I think that Masvidal comes in. Points I for think, Ben right there. Points for points Ben. For ben. <laughs> Second place right now. <laughs> I agree with you. I think his, I mean, he's lost to Usman before, but that was back in 2015. They're both whole, entirely different fighters. Um, I think that... Uh, he has to play it safe. I mean, Masvidal will knock him out. I think in the, that betting line is very favorable. Yeah. For Masvidal, if it stays standing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it stays standing up. But like I, like I said, I don't expect it to stay there. Justin, are we going to see takedowns from Edwards in this fight? You know what? I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of takedowns from Edwards. I think he's going to try to outpoint him standing. Justin I think that's going to be his mistake. Again. I, love I think that's it. where it's going to be his mistake, it. and that's where Masvidal can catch him. Uh, but at the end of the day, do I believe Edwards is a more technical striker? Yes, but I think Masvidal does carry the power with the uh, with the hands. But overall, I, I think Leon Edwards is the better fighter. It's a shame that it's not five rounds because this is something I would like to see go five rounds. Because well, I yeah. think in the end, Masvidal could catch him in those fourth, fifth a lot easier than he could in those one third, one to three. And you, yeah. know, do you, you know what? Do you Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know why it's not five rounds? It's because all of these fight nights now are at the apex, and only the pay-per-views are in the big arenas. And they're not going to fight these guys in the apex. Masvidal yeah. sells tickets, so they need him in a big arena. But mm -hmm. if they were still doing that, where they were doing their fight nights in different cities, fight night Hidalgo, fight night mm -hmm. Austin, right now all the fight nights are in apex. They're saving a lot of money, not renting out arenas, using their home you know, gym, and running them there, no fans. And I heard there is fans, but you have to buy tables. And it's like it was a uh, thirty grand for a table for this oh, main event wow. that was coming up this week. So you can get in there, and it's thirty grand, but it's like for a group. I think it's ten per table. Pitch so whatever, camaradas. whatever the math. Yeah, but if it's a good fight, you know what I mean. Like yeah. they're not putting these guys headlining fight nights five rounds like they normally would anymore. They're just saving them all for pay per views. So. This is long overdue. I think Masvidal has lost a couple of fights in a row, albeit mm -hmm. to the champ, but he has no no other outs. It was kind of like, hey, Leon Edwards has a two or a three next to his name in the ranking, so now I just yeah. got to take this fight. Lastly, I, I do got to ask you guys, Leon Edwards, let's say he gets the win. Is he next in line after that? Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Has to be. Guaranteed. Okay, and I, Masvidal, if he gets the win, you know he's already lost to the champ twice. Where does his name get Colby. He'd probably have to fight the Colby. winner of the Colby right. fight. Or the loser. The loser. I think he'd have to fight the loser. Okay. I agree. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the winner would get the won. tap. Unless Colby, the winner won. Get the tap. Yeah. Unless Colby won and Dana didn't really give Usman that automatic rematch. I know? got some I got some stats for you guys. So the most significant difference in their career statistics is the significant strikes landed per minute. Yeah, and that's uh, Leon Edwards only has 2.62 significant strikes per minute, and Masvidal lands about 4.22 significant strikes per minute. I think Great if it stands stuff. up, 
If it stands up, I don't think it goes with Edwards. I don't even piece of a soda or a three piece and a biscuit, whatever it was. You know, it's gonna be more of that if it stays standing. We have the graphic here in the middle. I would have he only has one submission. A rear naked choke back in uh that's the 2016. He's a decision fighter, just out points. I don't think he's gonna he's gonna submit George, and I think George is too dense to get kept on the ground. What I uh, what I think is that I kind of I mean I kind of agree with everybody here, but let's not sleep on Edwards standing either. I thought that you know if he stood up with Diaz, it was going to be a mistake, and he wasn't getting touched, man, for a good amount of that fight. His defense was really That's good true. too, and very true. Man. Diaz and Masvidal, yes, I know, you know maybe they're not at the same level, but essentially they're kind of almost the same fighter. You know they they really don't want to wrestle with you. They they, they will if they have to, but they're more like street fight, you know, brawlers, hands down, you know. Yeah. So Edwards, yeah. is, Edwards is kind of looking at the same kind of fight with the Diaz fight, and we saw what he did there. So, I mean, it could it go should. both. It it's, could go both ways, and I think that either way that it goes, uh, Edwards is favored, and Masvidal is just a little, a little behind. It's it's just different power that Masvidal brings. Like if Diaz was able to rock Edwards the way that he was, you know, and Diaz is more of a pepper, he peppers you, peppers you, and then you know yeah. the shots add up, and that's how he, Masvidal. I mean, we've seen him KO people with one punch, you know, recently. Yep. So and Edwards, Edwards, Edwards chin for a while Edwards he had lost that KO question. power, but he brought it back. Yeah, it's I'm looking fight. forward to this fight. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. So 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 uh, at the end of the day, it is another good booking too uh, for the UFC. I mean. Money, money makes the world go round, and I'm sure a fight like this makes Dana very, very happy. So, uh, in some in some injury news, before we get to the John Jones uh, right here, <laughs> all right, just you can bring this one in right here. This I almost don't guy, even want to talk about it. This because is your this guy. Is, this is my favorite middleweight fighter. Uh, I'm a of big time? fan. Yeah, I'm a, for a while he was my favorite fighter of all time. He didn't even have that long of a career. Yeah, he did. He's been fighting since so sad. I'm sorry, Justin. Let it out. Sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, oh, man, I was looking forward to seeing him back. No staph infection, no shin splint injury, nothing. I thought, okay, we have a shot here. It's a good opponent, someone who likes to stand up. I, we're going to see Luke uh, be able to kickbox again. I was really looking forward to this fight. And unfortunately, this week, we get the news, herniated disc. He's out. And it's just upsetting as a fan because I've been ready to be back on the Luke Rockhold train. Did you did you make like your own Luke Rockhold shirt and everything already that that that, that you can't wear? Yeah, I got his name uh, tattooed on my the back of my neck. <laughs> yeah, <the finger. laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> who else wants to touch on this injury? Because obviously we we know how how Justin feels. <laughs> so is this is this a big hit for the UFC or is this a bigger hit for Rockhold? You know, can they do without him or you know he? This card was more. stacked already. It's it's fine that he's not going to be there. there this card is Justin's ridiculously stacked. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, Justin. You're done. We know this how you was feel. This was his comeback fight. Strickland said he wasn't going to make it into the fight, and sure enough, he ends up pulling out. No surgery required. Just physical therapy for six weeks, and he'll be good. Roland, Rockhold's been done. Rockhold's been done. <laughs> Right? That's what I think, man. He sounds like me, bro. I signed up for this chiropractor in August. I've been going like twice a week for three months with just physical <laughs> therapy. I've been better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rufy, you were going to see Rufy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then you guys do not uh or do not, I guess, agree I or, 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 or on the same train with Justin here as this is uh, breaking news. It doesn't hurt them as much as it hurts me. That's all it comes down to. This is not breaking news to me. I was like, okay, all right, good. All right. So then what about the guy that offers to take his place? He he he, he put out some tweets today. If they Very need someone for Strickland, I'm down. I hate that piece of trash at Dana White at Big Man and Sean Shelby. Uh, and then he also said he disrespected Palestine, so I wouldn't miss disrespecting his face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is so, a welterweight saying this, too, who's willing to come up and wait – from all intents and purposes, we hear Bilal Muhammad's like one of the nicest guys, and he's ready to throw down with Sean Strickland. I, I want to see this fight. I like Bilal. I I, I don't know about his chances, but uh, he doesn't <laughs> have any grinds. I mean, it, 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 the thing is, you could never doubt that he's going to go in there and like put it on the show at least. You know, I think going up against Strickland, I think it will be too much for him. But I mean, I was interested. I was worried for Luke going into this fight with Strickland. So I'm kind of like, Glad that I don't have to watch him like 
take a beating <laughs> for you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, uh, I can't say that I'm too surprised that he pulled out. I mean, with how long he's been out, I think a couple of weeks in the training camp, you either know you got it or you don't. And I think that's what happened here with him. He saw it. Maybe things weren't firing like he wanted them to. And it's maybe it's just like uh, like how uh, – what's his name? Nick Diaz. I mean, a year ago, they showed that picture of him super fit. And then you see him on fight night, and it's a whole different guy there. You know, like who's that, who's that guy, that picture they showed us a year ago, ready to fight? You know, and then now he's like, I only had six weeks to get ready. And it's like hmm. this was all during the pandemic. It's not like the pandemic happened and then he lost like what he had. I just don't know what happened in between those times, you know, and is is Rockhold, I mean, did he need the money? Is that why he signed up? All right. So very, very, very valid points uh to your to your argument. He doesn't need the money. Justin. He's a uh, Apollo model, by the way. We get those, money over here. Roland, Demi, Demi Lovato's husband. Yes. <laughs> Justin screensaver. <laughs> Some really good, <laughs> some really good points there, man. So Ben, we already know. I think you agree uh, with Roland here on the Rockhold situation. But what's your opinion on uh, Bilal Muhammad I, wanting to step up and take and and take the fight? I'm a fan of Bilal Muhammad. Um, he's yeah. he's a good guy. You see him behind the desk. You see him podcasting. He's very active on Twitter as well. Um, I agree with them and the fact that I don't think that it's the best fight for him. But it kind of makes sense because Strickland was cutting weight to make the fight. It's coming up soon. Um, and Bilal Muhammad wouldn't have to cut weight that much weight because, you know, it's 10 pounds heavier than what he usually fights at. So I like him stepping up. I mean, this is what you're supposed to do. Sean Strickland, I believe, is a top 10 fighter in that other division. Mm -hmm. So I don't like his chances, but I like him stepping up. And if, it, if it's a five-round fight, maybe Bilal Muhammad stands a chance because he has really good cardio. But... Sean Strickland is, I mean, he's. It'll be a three rounder. Yeah, it's just, so that, he just, he just comes forward, man. He's a bully. And it was going to be a yeah. bad night for Luke Rockhold with Sean Strickland's fight style. So, besides the Masvidal fight that's already been booked, another possible booking for the UFC here yep. that, you know, might might want to, in, that interests we'll watch. some yeah, more of those fans. Uh, so, finally, to top it off with the MMA news, I think this might be one of the last topics. I'm not sure, but. I think he's the GOAT. I think Justin thinks he's the GOAT. I would assume we would all think he's the GOAT. Uh, Hall of Famer already, John Jones saga. But John Jones is John Jones, and we know that he gets in trouble. So recently he was banned from Jackson Week MMA in wake of domestic violence arrest. Another story that kind of coincides with the first story that uh, we brought it in. Uh, and then somebody even quoted, here's the deal, man. You're like my little brother. You should have to stop drinking and fix these things for a certain period of time until you come back to the gym. Uh, that was Wink himself. And then somebody else on Twitter had a heartbroken conversation over the phone with one of my longtime coaches last night. It really hurts to lose the support of someone I respect so much. Sincere thank you to the rest of the coaches for staying in the fight with me. Our journey continues from Boney, his official account, Johnny Bones. Ah, Roland, I see you. Like you're yeah. waiting to let him on shirt. He has to go first. I, mean, yeah. I, got, I got, I got a lot of. Uh, the a floor lot of is yours. So me and John Jones have a relationship. So is it, just, is it a Justin Luke Rockhold relationship or is it a different relationship? No, it's mad respect. I mean, I went to UFC uh, 200, so I was originally going to see uh, Diaz McGregor, and then that got canned. So then it was. Cormier Jones, and then that got canned. I ended up. Oh shooting. my god! Oh man, tell me about it. I found that out on the flight over there, and I almost, no I, shit. I, I almost got my refund. Like they offered refunds, and I almost did. But I was like, I'm here. I'm not gonna miss UFC 200. 200. So I saw oh, Nunes. I saw Cormier uh, Silva. I saw. Um, so that was a big letdown. Some legends. Like, you were still, Tate. You, were still you saw Misha Tate, house. my favorite. I saw her get. <laughs> it was sad. Just I just actually have excited. video of that fight, and uh, man, she was pretty bloody that fight. I saw Aldo. I gotta show you guys. One day I'm, I'm gonna get you guys to post it on your Insta. Regar regardless, you were in the theater amongst UFC legends. Literally, so that is so, awesome, man. So to tie that into everything, I originally went with the intention to see John Jones's thing, greatest ever. I mean, no questions asked, you know. Um, and the thing is, my perspective on this is like, okay, first of all, with Mike Winkle John, Mike Winkle John is trying to set a precedent for his gym. I think that's what he's doing at the end of the day. But at the same time, wow. who do you got coming out of that gym right now? I mean, all you got Holly is – Holm? <laughs> yeah, you got Holly Holm. We got Andre Arlovsky, if he's even still there. Diego he's Sanchez. with the American top team now. Yeah, okay. I knew he was there for a while, but he left. Um, but, I mean, I, I think that's a bad 
PR move in the sense of keeping your name and the brand associated to the UFC. Because now John's going to go find somewhere else to train and then they're going to get the notoriety if he gets that heavyweight championship and he did it with a whole new coach. That storyline is going to be there. Also, uh, where is, I mean, the UFC talks about helping these fighters out. I mean, these guys need life coaches. These guys need like a babysitter in the meantime while they're like, I mean, it doesn't make sense that they didn't get him somebody for UFC <laughs> weekend. And I mean, just this, I mean, he just tweeted right before we came on. I have some updated tweets that he's kind of defending his case. He said, um, this was at 437. I don't know if that's Central or Eastern. But he said, I love how people are imagining the worst possible situation in their heads and making it somehow factual. I never hit my fiance and our daughters were woken up after our confrontation. My daughters didn't see or hear us arguing. And then in a separate tweet, two minutes later, the only the, that's really the only thing I clearly clarify, clarify. Outside of that, looking forward to moving forward without alcohol. It's the first time in my life where I'm actually ready to quit. Glad to have the support of my fiance, family, friends, and fans. And on top of life coaches, these guys need th therapists. Like they need to unpack all this stuff. Luis but they have all, all that. You don't think you don't think that they have all of that? I mean, they've no, given this don't. guy, bro. Yes, they do, bro. No, they, don't. They, they don't have all and, that. And like, how much more of a life coach does he need than Mike Winklejohn? Fuck! Think, if if that guy gives up on you, fam, I said it a couple weeks ago. He's a piece of shit. The greatest he's not bigger, fighter, he's not bigger than Jinko John. The like, greatest fighter of all time, but he's a piece of shit, fam. So, if Mike Winklejohn's walking out of him. It's because this guy still hasn't fucking learned. How many times you got to go to jail? How many times you got to be accused of domestic abuse? That's not a good look for his gym. Hey, I have a domestic abuser. Mike Winklejohn's a staple. He's a legend in MMA. You know, he's a legend in Albuquerque. Everybody's left his gym. Diego Sanchez has left. Cowboys left under different occasions. This is something that Mike Winklejohn said, hey, you're no longer accepted here. And for Mike Winklejohn, the last guy in his corner and, you know, the guy that brought him up for him to give up on him. I think that we need to like take a step back and look at it as in John Jones needs to get his life together, bro. Because if this was the first time, fine, but it's been so many damn times that Mike Winkle, John, his life coach, his father figure coach walked out on him. That says okay. a lot. That's my thing a difference is, between life my coach thing and, and trainer. No, my thing he's is, more hold than on, a hold trainer. On. He's more than a trainer. Right. Hold on. My thing is that, okay, it says the headline reads, banned from Jackson Wink MMA. Now, is he using that as something to say, my gym yeah, is, gym. you know, kind of, yeah, I know. It's My gym's kind of pushing away from, from, from John Jones. I don't want him around. I don't want, you know, the, the, the students to go there. Around. Hold on, hold on. Or it, do you think that low-key Wink's still on a personal level you know, on John's side, trying to help him get through everything. He's just he's just disassociating his gym and his brand. Do you yeah. think that that's the case here? And like, I mean, low key that he still texts him. He still so you know talks to him, calls him on oh, yeah. the phone. Well, or do John you think Jones seems very hurt by this yeah. news. He seems very hurt by Winkle John doing this. So I don't think that John Jones wants to hear anything from Mike Winkle John right now. That's, I agree with that's that. the tweet. Kind of sounds like he John Jones moved on already. Yeah, the way he like, said. For the rest of the coaches staying in the fight with me, our journey continues. Like, I, John Jones, he's that personality that if you cut ties with him, he's fine. He's gone. He's not going to – he is not loyal to anybody. That's what it seems like because he's not even loyal to his wife because he hits her or whatever. So I mean, he was loyal to yet. his gym. He <laughs> stayed with, he's been with his gym for over a decade, yeah. bro. The UFC is not going to release him. They threatened to. They won't do the same to. They would. They Luis Pena was expendable. They won't release him and let Bellator sign him and bring more to the brand of Bellator. They'll hold it over his head. They won't give him a fight. It's just going to drag out. He either doesn't fight again or he gets that free pass again, depending. I mean, yep. the difference between this is that the investigation was over for Luis Pena and it was like all documented the uh, injuries, everything like that. Obviously John Jones's wife had her blood, everything like that. And there's the cop statements and everything like that, but there's no actual case built out yet as developed as it was for Luis Pena. So that's going to, I think, dictate what the UFC does. Even if they do do something though, I think they're going to go the cheap route and find him and say that that was their punishment and not provide any or suspend him when he wasn't even going to be out for give him a year suspension. He wasn't going to fight in a year. He said 2022 already. Two things, man, is does Dana say, fuck it. I don't care if, if, if he's going to give me a big payday, do I let him fight? Do you guys think that that, that, that happens? Absolutely. 
he made a comment yesterday after a contender series talking about that it could happen to John Jones too. And I think that's just him playing PC mm -hmm. so that they can show that they're not playing favorites, even though, I mean, it's really clear. Like, okay. So then, so then let like, John Jones go. If so, Francis so, is on the table and Jones is on the other side, Dane is down. Doesn't matter. He'll right, do it tomorrow. So in complete agreement that the owner would say, Hey man, I don't care what's, what's going on. You're going to fight. Comparing that to, to to the other sport that we see this a lot happen, the NFL. Any little thing happens in the NFL right away, their career is pretty much done. Do you I mean, do you guys feel that there's a difference? Uh yes. that, that UFC fighters get a little bit more leeway sometimes because they're not under, you know, this huge uh the shield you kind of sport as they as well, they and, as they call it. And the UFC. NFL has a policy against uh, you know domestic abuse domestic violence like zero tolerance the ufc doesn't have anything like that in place so it's kind of like if you're big yeah. enough well, we're going to sit you on the shelf for a bit but we're not going to release you so on the one of the competitors you can go become their biggest star because anywhere that he ends up he's going to be that company's biggest star so why would the ufc do that i think they'd rather just shelf him the comparison though ron it's that it's that the nfl is you know, that's There's in nowhere to go with the NFL. That's I, in everybody's living room. That's everywhere. That's that's mainstream yeah. as it gets. You know what I mean? They have to have things like that in order. The UFC doesn't have rules like that. Roland, you were as soon as soon as I was talking about Roland, you kind of you know agreed right away, man. So what what was it's, your take on that? Yeah, it's the difference between an independent contractor and an employer. The NFL is the employer of the these guys. The UFC fighters are independent contractors for a certain number of fights. That that's makes how sense they're paid too. and that's how they're treated. That's why they're not get with that earlier when Ben said that they have the resources. I don't think the UFC provides them therapists, life coaches. They opened the apex to start that, but uh, the U NFL has – oh, shoot. The, the – uh, N <laughs> <laughs> Man, he was – well, well, as, well, as well, he was, was no, saying, though, I, I haven't so seen were, anything yeah. that dictates or says that there's any – like – therapy for mental stability or anything like that. Now, when it comes to the physical or the PI, there's all the tools. They have all the tools to them, but nothing for like the mental side of things. The other thing with the NFL compared one to and the, not the other, cause I mean, what, where, well, where I have mean, you seen when they, they show the PI UFC therapist building, but bro, they, when they go to the PI and they show all the PI stuff, they never show, oh, by the way, we offer therapy for our fighters. They don't do that. But that's, that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's part of the there, thing that the unions, the, the MMA unions have talked about wanting to get for them is is free therapy. But that's not something UFC is willing to include. The other thing to talk about, though, is between the NFL and MMA, in MMA, you lose a fighter. John Jones goes tomorrow, becomes the biggest thing in Bellator. In the NFL, there's nowhere to go, so they can hold that over your head completely. They don't have to worry oh, no. about you becoming a star in a, some other league because there's no other league to go to. Yeah, CFL they're the only. Does? Nah, they're the XFL, only. They're the CFL. only. Uh, they're the only game in town. In other words, they're the only yeah, game in town. All right, yeah. all right, cool. So I think we got Roland back. Roland, are you? If you're back, maybe not yet. I was gonna say he can kind of take us out uh, of the John Jones saga, but uh, moving on, guys. I think all the news is pretty much over. Uh, you know, we kind of went through this MMA tap hour, all the big headlines. Are we still good? Yeah, no, just go to yeah, Ben's good. bets now. Oh, Ben's okay. bets for the week. All right, cool. Let's do it then, man. Let's go ahead and uh, continue on the show with uh, Ben's plays, the betting portion. Yes, sir. And here um, we go, man. Take us, take, take, take us through your plays, man. Because besides watching it and all the storylines, the best part of watching sports in general, uh, you know, especially MMA, is when you time to win the feria. All right. So bring us in your plays, man. What you got for this MMA? Yeah, um, I have two plays for the show. I'm gonna start off with a little parlay, um, and this is for this Saturday's card. Um, you know, no, nothing on the main event. It is a, a female main event, but for this parlay, I got Jim Miller. At minus 235. He's fighting Eric Gonzalez, guy making his UFC debut. Jim Miller, veteran, veteran of the game. I mean, been through the ringer, done it all. I expect the first round submission from him. Um, so oh. I tied him into this parlay. Obviously, a big favorite. Uh, Ramasan Amiv, he's fighting uh, Danny Roberts. Uh, Amiv, a Russian. I expect him to grind, grind Roberts onto the fence, you know, uh, work in takedowns. 
and pretty much cruised to a victory for for Ramazan Amid, a prospect, a lot of a lot of hype around him. And then for my last one, Ludovic Klein. Uh, you know, <laughs> like like how I got that. that. Yeah. yeah. And he's fighting Nate Landwehr. Nate Landwehr is like a, a folk legend uh in the in you know in the local MMA scene or you know the 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 minors like LFA and all of that. Um a character always brings it when he fights, but not much technique, just a brawler. Uh, I expect Ludovic Klein to get him out of there in this fight. I don't expect it to see the judges. None of these fights do I expect it to go to the judges. Jim Miller by sub, um, and me by ground and pound, and Klein by by knockout. So you put them all three together, the parlay plus 140. Um, I know it is a three-teamer, but I feel pretty good about all three of these. Nice, man. So it looks like it's going to be a clean sweep. You don't expect uh, you know, any of these fights to go to the judges, so that's really, really good for everybody following this play right here. Parlay 140. Uh, what that means, guys, you throw 100 bucks for all these three guys to win it, and you win that 100 plus another 140 more. So uh, that's that would be a hell of a night, man. You know what's uh, crazy about this parlay, Ben, is the person I feel the strongest about has the least best odds, Jim Miller. Jim Miller. I mean, he's yeah, fighting that debut guy, that. so yeah. you expect him to just get him to the ground and, and sub him. Uh most more than likely, like I said, in the first round. So Jim Miller by sub also, if he wins, more than likely that's how it's gonna happen. Roland, do you agree all these three guys uh come through with the parlay or 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 who's one guy that you feel hey might be a little bit suspect? I feel like Jim Miller's suspect. <laughs> <laughs> you think the new yeah, the, the, the day viewer is gonna get him out of there? Yeah, there yeah, hey, I mean, Jim you You know why? There, because Ro Ronan's making a debut of him, you know, of of himself, dog. Of the so MMA like, hour for sure. Of the yeah. MMA hour. It's his debut, so he's going for the debut guy against Jim Miller. Go ahead, Roland. <laughs> I yeah, I feel that uh I feel that Eric Gonzalez is gonna have a little bit more to show. I feel he's gonna come out. I feel he'll just outlast Jim Miller. I think uh, he'll, he'll try to keep it standing up, obviously. I think maybe he'll point win, get himself a decision. Nice first win in the UFC, nothing too crazy. I mean, Jim Miller's durable. I mean, he's lasted as long as a career as he had. If anything, he's the resident gatekeeper along with Robbie Lawler yeah. and a lot of others. So, I mean, it, it's this is more the UFC saying, all right, Gonzalez, let's see what you got. See if we could keep moving you forward or if this is a waste of our time. Yeah, Justin, this is this is the time where they just made some very valid takes up there. He did, he did. On a Miller. So are you agreeing? Are you agreeing with your cut? Or are you yeah, gonna you go know, with Ben? I think if this wasn't that? a rookie, I would agree with my cousin because Jim Miller is four and eight in his last 12 fights. But this <laughs> is a new guy to the UFC. And Jim Miller, like Roland said, gatekeeper, has a lot of presence in the UFC, a lot of veteran presence, over 49 fights in MMA. I'm gonna go with the veteran here. Like I told uh, Ben, least least best odds here, but I still like that that play here for Jim Miller. All right. So best believe I'm gonna remind you guys if Miller loses that you got <laughs> that, that you got punked on your own show by the guests. Right. Okay. <laughs> anything else? Anything else y'all want to touch on on uh, the Ra the Ramazan or the Klein fight? I think we got one more play after this. Let's get to that yeah. one. All right, let's do it. So everybody's in agreement here. Uh, you can go to Bed King Online, use the code WTBS, and that's their Twitter handle, man. So go to Bed King Online. Everybody has one. Uh, let them know that you want to make that bet or that you uh, follow us here, man. Are we talking about sports? So besides the parlays, besides the juicy ones, you always got to, you know, go for the straight play of the night as well. So, Ben, take us into this, your straight shot of the night and let us know yeah. what the well, shot glass is right there, boy. <laughs> Yeah, so so for the straight play, I'm gonna go here with Julian Marquez and Jordan Beverly Hills Ninja, right? Uh, A la both, verga. Both Dana White <laughs> and I think it's Julian the Cuban Missile Marquez, I believe. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, for some, some, pretty rowdy, nicknames, some pretty rowdy nicknames and some pretty badass fight styles too. Um, I expect him to get right after it. Marquez is more of a bite down on his mouthpiece and just kind of Slug it out. He likes better hassles, cool. Yeah, however, he does. Mostly wins by KO or submission. But I expect these guys, I don't expect it to get out of the first round, to be honest. I expect really? somebody to get dropped and be finished early. Damn. Jordan Wright's more of a front runner. He is good on the feet, but when he gets bullied and when he gets touched, he doesn't like it at all. So if Marquez can drop him once, I think that's all that it's going to take to get Jordan Wright out of there. And Jordan Wright also has hands on him and can drop Marquez. 
I like this one to not even touch the second round, but under one and a half. So under uh, two minutes and 30 seconds in the second round, it's got to hit by then. According according to you, we're going to have the shortest fight night ever night. in fight. the history of, of hey, a fight nights because yeah, all, we all of your fights all of your fights have been you know no less than a round and a half to two rounds so it might, it uh, might we'll be one see. of those it might be one of those <laughs> just the case with fight we'll nights they end, they end up finishing they get a lot of finishes with fight nights and it's always the all ones right. that don't really have good fights and then they end mm-hmm. up turning into bangers that's yep. usually the all way right. it happens all right I'm taking well, right I, I'm We're taking right. right. He has a five-inch reach advantage. His only loss was to Joaquin Buckley back at UFC 255. I think that uh, his fights never go to decisions, so I don't think it's going to go all the way. And so that, go with, that so, so that so plays with for a under one and a half rounds. Too. Yep, and I think also um, with the way that Julian Marquez dropped the ball with Miley Cyrus, I just can't go for him. <laughs> 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 he came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> he, blew, he blew his shot with her is what they're saying yeah oh, no. damn what that's do you think, justin i'm with i'm with both of you on this Part under one and a half rounds it's going to be a finish here both guys are going to be throwing to finish it would be nice if if uh the books would have a fight of the night uh prop yeah, they, okay. would that. that would yeah, be that would be a that. nice little bet right there get some ready uh, plus money but this would be a top candidate for sure all right, so that's it, man. Uh, ben went ahead and put his place, his parlay, and uh, the straight shot of the night. And I think this kind of does it for the show. Roland, uh, I'm sorry. Damn, shout out to Roland. I forgot uh, for not being with us today. Oh, oh, the, other the other Roland. Oh, yeah. Roland Z. Yeah, yeah, the other Roland. Roland Z. Uh, anything that you guys want to say, man, before we wrap it up? Anything that I missed? Uh, any other Roland. MMA or combat yeah. sports news? Roland, any other MMA news you want to part us with here? I think um, two things. Number one, also got to give it up. Jordan Rice from San Antonio, so that's why you got to give him a little extra credit. Texas. Okay. Uh, so aye, that, aye. that's one of the reasons why we should be going for him. And the other <laughs> one, just to finish my thought before I cut out on the whole John Jones thing. I was talking about <laughs> the re- <laughs> had to go out. back. I get it up. Uh, it was about resources. We were talking about the NFL has a campaign, how to spend your money. How to how to conduct yourself so that you're part of the performance policy. I think at the end of the day, the UFC doesn't have that because they're independent contractors. They decide their training camps. They all negotiate outside of the UFC how much they're going to pay their sparring partners, everything like that. All it's all contractual in the UFC, and I think the UFC with the how much they're looking to do of building their performance centers in Puerto Rico and overseas. I think they heavily need to invest in. Uh, personal life coaches, therapists, counselors, not not psychiatrists where they're drugging up these guys, but people uh, to help them talk through this. Because these guys are primal. H- half of these guys fight primally. Half of these guys are martial artists. The other ones are just bangers. You come in here with a primal mindset. I mean, look at Luis Pena. Sometimes they just can't turn it off, and I think they need that extra support. Yeah, they and- need that Marshawn Lynch telling them how to spend their chickens. The, the one thing that I will say, and Justin put me onto game because I was convinced that they did have that for them, but it might, like, and it's as fucked up as it sounds, it might be against the UFC's interest because, what, these guys are going to go and tell, you know, these therapists and psychiatrists how fucked up they are in the head and this, this, and that, and it's just going to push for a union, and that's what the UFC doesn't want. So that's just another little, you know, stepping stone into getting towards a union and it, the union doesn't benefit the UFC. And we know how Dana White feels about, you know, there being a union in the UFC. So I retract my statements and thinking that they did have that. And I can see why it makes sense for the UFC side that they don't have that, but it's fucked up and they should have that. Yeah, they only offer health insurance only to active fighters. Once you become inactive, you're out of health insurance with UFC. So they're definitely not doing anything beyond that as well which is kind of messed up because there How, should be – there's enough money this, to provide a lifetime of health insurance for these fighters. Justin, you're uh, – I mean, I know that you watch some uh, wrestling. Does wrestling provide fighters insurance after they're done? Uh, with no, the they're in the same boat with this independent okay. contract work oh, where okay. while, while you're active, they're, they'll pay your bill till you're healthy, but once you're out, you're, they're like uh, circus workers, honestly. They put their body through a lot of things, and they don't get the pay that they should. It's also it's also role models. I mean, at the end of the day, the UFC doesn't have too much. Ma- Nowadays, they do more so because everybody's going into commentating, starting to become like understand how much their brand matters. DC and all that, all the way they conduct themselves. Khabib tries, and y'all hate on him. 
<laughs> that could be back to welterweight where you should have been fighting the whole time. <laughs> and but he tries like, to be a role model and y'all hate on him. Bro, that guy He's a cornball, bro. Come on, it's hard not bro. to. I'm here for women's rights, for equality for everybody <laughs> and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, you, like Ben said, it doesn't benefit it cuz it's like we're talking about the Francis and John fight. I mean, it, it has to happen, but the only reason it's not happening is because nobody wants to lose more money than the other. Nobody wants to give away more money than what they can get. So what happens? We it's get all a stalemate. the business now. Now we get as a narrative as fans. Wolf tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Wolf tickets. Well, uh, man, man, it was it was really good to have you on the show, Roland. We've actually never even met. So the first <laughs> time I'm meeting you is on the show. So that was really badass, man. Uh, yeah. It looks. It sounds like it sounds like you know your shit, whether it's boxing, whether it's Justin's favorite boxing, or whether it's Ben's favorite UFC. Uh, you were, man, you were a hell of a guest here. I mean, I'm, you know, talking about combat sports. So, uh, good luck to you if you're gonna go ahead and take some of Ben's plays this weekend. Uh, other than that, Justin, do you have anything to say to Roland before he goes, before your cut leaves, or anything that's, that's uh, or anything that's coming up as far as uh, we talking about sports news? Nah, other than it was a pleasure to have Roland on. I'm glad I was able to be on with him uh, last time. Like I said, he was on. I didn't get to get on, but this time uh, I'm glad that we got on together. Yeah, and we'll be live tomorrow for pregame of NF Thursday NFL, right? Yeah. I'm Somewhere. down if you guys are down. And, man, I know this was MMA tap hour, but we have been killing NFL. I mean, destroying okay. it as a squad. We went 10 and 4. No, uh, 10, 10 and 3. And, 10, 10 and, and three. 3. Yeah, we went 10 and 3 this past weekend. We were giving out some, I mean, some bangers, bro. So yeah. follow us tomorrow. Have another we three on. week. Had another three in a week. Justin swept it. So, we'll get to that tomorrow, uh, man. We'll get to yeah. that tomorrow. But I'm tonight. saying you got to watch tomorrow because we're going to come with it as we do every Thursday night through our Thursday night run through. So, uh, Justin, load up the video. Let's get this out so everybody can watch us tomorrow on Thursday night. And uh, from everybody here, we're talking about sports rolling. Thanks again, bro. Thank you for everything. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always. Hello, I guess, man. Okay. All right. Peace. Hey. I'm supposed to be a franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Yes. Not a Smug game, not a game. Me. Bam, bam. Me, man. Not a game. Slap that place, you scored 30. What are we even talking about, man? We talking about sports here.